Welcome to this video on theoretically deriving a function of charge versus time for an RC circuit. That's a mouthful. And basically what we're doing is we're going to find an equation for this graph that we have over here on the desmos.com graphing calculator. Such an awesome tool and thank you to them. So when we're looking at this function here, we're trying to say that there is some time dependence, so time's going to come into play here. And just like any circuit that we've worked with before, and when we're trying to come up with an equation or a mathematical expression for the circuit, we're going to use Kirchhoff's loop rule. And that's going to start us off here in order to get something that's time related. Okay, so I'm going to write a loop rule statement for this circuit. So I'm going to show that there's EMF here and a voltage drop over this resistor and then a voltage across the capacitance or the capacitor that I'll call delta V sub C and that all equals zero. Now this is a ohmic resistor so meaning that resistance is constant so I can say that the voltage drop across that resistor is then the product IR. So I'll go ahead and substitute that in. The voltage across the capacitor is going to be equal to, um, if we take our capacitance equation, we can see that Q, or sorry, delta V is equal to Q over C. So I'll go ahead and substitute this in over here. Okay. Now, this is not time dependent yet. It's also a little deceptive because Although the EMF, the resistor, and the capacitance are all constant, the Q, the charge on the plates, obviously is not, because we can see it's changing. Neither is the current. So what I'm going to do here is I can relate the current and the charge here by using the derivative of I, or of Q. So dQ dt is I. So if I go ahead and substitute that in here, I have EMF minus dq dt times r minus q, it's really q of t, it's a function, over c is equal to zero. And for the eagle-eyed among you, you probably noticed that this is a function with its time, with its derivative in an, an equation, and so that's a differential equation. And we could solve that. And the variable, or the equation, I should say, that we're solving for here is this, which is Q as a function of time. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to say that in order to simplify this just a little bit, I'm going to rather look at the discharge rather than the charging. Because with charging, I have to include the battery. But if you remember the circuit that I made before, I had a switch here which I am going to leave open right now. And then I had this middle branch that I had the close switch in. So basically I'm eliminating the battery from the circuit and I'm gonna discharge this capacitor. So what I'm gonna do here if I go back to Desmos is I'm going to actually be figuring out this function over here rather than the initial one that I had up on the screen a second ago. So what's going to happen here, essentially, is I'm going to make EMF zero. Now, I'm still including the EMF as part of this statement because it's what set the total voltage of the capacitor to begin with. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that this is zero, and I'll add these two terms to the other side. So I essentially will have zero is equal to dq dt times r minus q of t over c. So, or plus, sorry, Q over T, Q times T over C. So it's going to be essentially an expression that looks like this. Now I'm going to solve this differential equation. If you're not interested in watching that process, you can skip to the end to find out what the function actually is. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. It is separable. It's first order. We It's separable. I could put Qs and DQs on one side and DTs on the other. So what I'll go ahead and do is subtract... Uh, let's see, Q over C to this side. So I have negative Q over C is equal to dQ dt times R. Okay, now what I'm going to do is move the Q over to this side. And um, let's go ahead and do that as 
um, and move the dt over to this side. So I'll do dt is equal to negative c. So I'm just putting the negative with the constant here. And this side's going to be dq over q times r. And then I'll divide by r to this other side. So I'll have dt over negative r times c is equal to dq over q. Okay, at this point I've separated the variables. Now I can integrate both sides here. Okay, this side is going to go from when t equals 0 to just some value when t equals t. I'll just leave it kind of generic. This side, obviously, I start with an initial charge value, and I can find any charge value, final charge value, and I'll leave that as q up there. Okay, the left hand side is pretty easy. I'm, I'll pull this one over negative one over RC out because that is constant and then I'm just really integrating from zero to T. I'm integrating one really with respect to T. So this side is going to give me um, negative one over RC times T. Okay, or negative T over RC. Now I skipped the step of actually showing the evaluation at the limits because the lower limit is just going to give us zero and so we should get this at the end of the day. Okay, this side, remembering some of these identities here, integral of du over u is just the natural log of u. Okay, so on this side it's going to give me the natural log of q um, and that's going to be evaluated from Q naught to Q, okay? So I have negative T over RC is equal to the natural log of Q minus the natural log of Q naught, okay? I can simplify this expression. So negative T over RC is equal to natural log of Q over Q naught, like this, okay? Next step will be to, I guess I could do this. So I'll have e to the negative t over rc. This side, I have just q over q sub naught. Okay, and then finally, I'm going to solve for q, which is the point of this whole thing. So I'll multiply by q naught, and I'm, I'll just flip these and say that q of t is equal to q naught times e to the negative t over r c. Now, going back up here to where I made EMF zero, because EMF was still part of the process, right? In order to charge this capacitor to begin with, I needed to have the EMF there to begin with. And so what I'm going to say here is that this initial charge, right? If I think of the initial charge on the capacitor, I know, once again, capacitance is charge over voltage, but this is going to be charge over EMF because that's the value it will reach, right? So Q initial is going to be equal to C times EMF, and I'll substitute that in there. Now, that's not really that important, to be honest, in terms of actually solving this equation, but I do see here that if I come over to this function, increasing C should increase this coefficient here, which is the y-intercept, and it does. Okay, increasing r up here should stretch this equation this way a little bit, and so I see, yep, it does. And so does um, changing the c value initially. You can see how it's going to hold it uh, still. Now, another thing that we can look at is charging, changing the initial voltage of the battery here that also would adjust the initial charge value. And so here we have an equation for charge as a function of time. And this, of course, is for the discharging of the capacitor. You could solve for the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time pretty easily here because we know the relationship between C and EMF. So you could see the adjustment that you could make. Now what I'd like for you to try to do is take the time derivative of this equation, so dq dt, and you should have the current equation, and see what you get, and in the next video 
we will take a look at that together.